Hey there, welcome back to the Tin Man Boating Club YouTube channel. showing you how to change the oil on your wake boat. I will be specifically working on my 2018 Malibu Wake Setter 24MXZ. This method should apply to most 6.2 liter Inmar Raptor engines for boats from 2016 and on. This method will also apply to many different boat models but take into consideration the differences such as where and how the oil filter is changed and how you access the oil drain, hose, or plug, and also how you access the oil fill cap. All right, so here we go. All right, so the first thing that you do is you remove your engine panel um, or panels. In this case, there are two knobs uh, which hold up the top panel and hold the t bottom two panels in place as well. Uh, on other Malibu and Axis boats, um, typically I think you'll find that there is two um, kind of release levers or tabs on the inside or the motor side of the panel and once you just flip those uh, to where they're not holding the panel on and then pop the panel out. So you can see I'm removing the bottom panel. I don't need to do anything with that front panel there because I have all the access I need now. And now you can see that I am looking at the drain hose and it is clipped onto uh, a mount on the motor. I flipped that around so I could pull it off uh, and then uh, removed it. Now you can see that I'm pointing out a zip tie. <clears throat> so I'm just clipping that with a pair of dikes. There's the zip tie coming off and now I'm giving you a more close up look at So I actually had to get a wrench, a couple a wrench and a pair of pliers to get this off. Um, usually when I'm done, I'll just finger tighten this, uh, usually decently tight, but that way I, the next time I can just undo it with my fingers. So now I have it loosened up, I'm just going to pull it off with my hands. I'll just give you a close up of what it looks like while it's off. Now you'll want to remove your, your rear drain plug. So I'll just get a crest wrench, pull that off. And then set that in a safe location. I just put mine on the bottom of the trailer. So now what you need to do is you need to take the drain hose and feed it through that drain plug hole. So I just feel with my hand where the hole is and then try to guide that drain hose through that hole. Usually you can just get it started. You'll see, I apologize for the video quality here, uh, but you'll see it kind of pop out a little bit. And it actually shoves out a piece of fiberglass or something that was laying around at the bottom of the boat. So now I've got the end sticking out. And now I'm gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it the rest of the way out. And you wanna to try to get it out as, as far as you can uh, so that you can get it closer to your whatever you're going to be draining it into. You can see it's already dripping oil. Uh, that doesn't typically happen, but 
generally it's not going to be much because I haven't pulled any of the caps off up top. Uh, but it is going to be prepared with the towel or uh, or your drain pan right away uh, before you even pull it out. So that way it's not dripping onto your, your uh, garage floor or wherever you're at. So you can see I have my drain pan set up below there um, and it's just dripping a little. So next I'm going into my engine compartment um, on 24MXZ. This is how you get to it. You have to have both of your top hatches open and then uh, or your, your uh, rear, your right and left locker open and then uh, you open the whole compartment. Um, and then you're going to want to remove the basically uh, molding or uh, kind of your pretty piece off the top of the motor and it just pops right off. And then I am showing you where the oil cap is and where you'll be putting the oil in. And then I am pulling the dipstick up just to release uh, any suction there. And then same with the oil cap, so to let it, to let it flow without uh, any suction up from up top. Next, we're looking at the oil filter container, which I love on the Raptor engines. Um, all you do is unscrew the top of this and you pull out a cartridge and you replace the cartridge. Um, it's not your uh, typical style of uh, oil filter where you screw it on and screw it off. The whole filter, you fill the filter with oil and, and then uh, screw it back on, which always kind of makes a mess. If you do not have the Raptor engine, um, then usually this will be up in the front uh, on this same side. Uh, and it'll be a normal oil filter that you'll screw off. Uh, Raptor engine, I love they ch how they changed this and uh, made it a lot, a lot nicer to do oil changes. So once you have that screwed off, you'll want to have a rag or something so you can pull that out and immediately put it on your rag because it is going to have some oil dripping from it. So here's what it looks like. This is the cap with the cartridge. And there I have the cartridge removed and the cap sitting there and they're both sitting on top of my oil pan so they can sit there and drip freely. Um, once they've dripped for a while, I can pull them out. Now you can see that I am wondering why it's not flowing yet. So this isn't something I necessarily recommend, but what I do is suck on the end of it to get it started. Um, kind of like you would do to siphon gas. Uh, and sure enough, I got it going after a couple of tries. And the oil that the Ford Raptor engine uses is pretty uh, pretty thin or not, not very thick, I should say. So it flows pretty freely. I didn't run my engine at all. Uh, a lot of times when you change your oil, you would run your engine so that it uh, improves the flow, but I didn't do that at all. Um, there you can see it's almost full, that's a 10 quart oil pan. I know that the motor takes eight quarts, so I know it's done. Uh, now I'm putting the drain hose back in. Takes a little bit of wiggling around to get the last piece in. And now I'm putting the drain plug, the rear drain plug back in. Make sure you give that a tighten. So the motor oil I'm using is the Ford Motorcraft motor oil 5W30 synthetic blend. So not full synthetic, um, but synthetic blend. So now I am grabbing the hose back off the bottom of the boat. And I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on it. And again, I, I normally just finger tighten this. Uh, I still get it decently tight, but I normally just finger tighten it. If you're not comfortable with that, you can always grab your wrenches, tighten it more. And then once I've got that tight enough, just clipping it back onto that mount that's, that's on the side of the motor there. <clears throat> And 
And then I'm flipping the clip back around the way it was originally. Next, what I do is I put some oil, almost a quart, not quite a full quart, in the oil filter container or holder, whatever you want to call that. Um, you can kind of see some of it go down into the engine, um, but basically, you know, just like you would fill a different style oil filter that you screw on and screw off, um, I'm doing that with the container so that way when I put the cartridge back in, it, it already has oil in it. And I'm really filling it up to kind of where the, the yellow lettering is there, the stickers are. Now you can see I put the dipstick back in. And now I'm putting in my homemade funnel uh, so I can pour the rest of the oil in through that at the top of the engine. And this, the Raptor engines, the 6.2 liter engines take eight quarts. So I'm pouring eight separate quart jugs in um, I buy a case of 12 quart jugs. I like doing that because I know exactly how many to put in. Um, I, I actually find that, that, that when I buy that on Amazon, it's actually cheaper to buy it as separate quarts as opposed to buying the um, gallon jugs. So once you're all done, you'll want to make sure you put the motor or the uh, oil cap back on. I actually started putting the, the cover back on before I did that. So you'll notice that here now I will realize it and I'll think, okay, I got to put that oil cap back on. And then go ahead and put your cover back on. And usually I put my hand underneath to feel where the, uh, the mount is and then I'll, and then uh, feel where it is on the motor and line those up. So then I can press it back on. And you just shove it down and it pops on. And then you can close up the engine compartment. So here's the filter that I use. Uh, it's a Wix filter. Uh, there's the part number there. I get it off of Amazon. It came with a Volvo filter. So if, you, if you're really worried about it, you can get the Volvo part. Um, but here's what the filter looks like. And this is what was recommended by the dealer. So uh, it also comes with a seal. You can see the, the white seal on the cap there. Um, it's, it's only been 10 hours. I think that's perfectly fine. I'm not worried about replacing that. I'll probably replace that on the next oil change. So now here I am putting it back into the container and I'm screwing the cap on. And just get it hand tight. And after you get it hand tight, I did take a wrench to it, but um, it really didn't need much more tightening. Um, you'll be able to tell it, it's pretty much tight. But it's always good to check with a wrench on that one. So one other thing I've gotten used to doing uh, during an oil change is I check the raw water filter or intake um, and you, you can tell it's clean on mine, but you can, if you need to clean it, you can just screw the black cap off the top of that. Um, and, uh, then you can pull the screen out and you can clean it out uh, and then put it back in and put the black cap back on top. All right. So the last thing to do is go into your screen. So you, you can see my camera is kind of having trouble picking this up. Uh, that's why I'm doing it in the dark. Um, but you'll want to click on the settings. You want to be on the settings screen where you control your lights. So you, you can see I'm on the, the music screen there. But you'll want to go to the settings screen. Um, so I'll show you me clicking on that. And then from there, you'll click on settings up in the top left hand corner. And then what you'll want to do is scroll down through your options until you find service, the word service. So you can see I found it there. Now I'm going to click on that. And you can see that my 10 out, 10 to 20 hours says service needed. And it's in red. It looks orange there, but it's in red. And I'm at 10.1 hours. I'm just going to click that button saying service is done. Now it's in green. You can also see that my next oil change will be required at 75 hours. So that's when I'll be doing it again. That's it. 
right, so that is how you change your oil on the Inmar 6.2 liter Raptor engine for wake boats. So a couple other things to mention are if you don't have the Raptor engine, the Indomar Raptor engine, um, chances are you're going to require or your engine requires a thicker oil. Um, and I will tell you that I normally would run my engine and get it to operating temp before I would uh, uh, drain the oil. Um, and obviously you'd want a fake lake connected or you'd want it, you want it uh, somehow getting water through the engine. Which on this boat, you could hook a hose up to that uh, water, water strainer or a water filter. Also, it is obviously recommended by Malibu that you get this done by your dealer. I think it's best if you check with your dealer to make sure they're, they're okay with you doing your own uh, oil changes. In my case, I live three hours away from the dealer. Um, and it actually helps both of us because then he's not having to add another oil change in or service during the busy season. And also I don't have to drive round trip six hours, you know, leave my boat and then drive another six hours uh, to get it and then possibly miss out on a weekend or two of, uh, of uh, being on the lake. Obviously, if you screw up your motor by doing your own oil change, that would probably void your warranty on your engine. That's why you may need to check with your service department at your dealer. Um, but it's a pretty simple oil change. So as long as you're comfortable with doing it and your dealer's comfortable with you doing it, then I don't see any reason why you can't accomplish this on your own. I hope this video was helpful. I put the information on the oil that I used and the filter that I used in the description below. If you enjoyed my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Also, please leave comments as I enjoy reading the feedback and it helps me enhance the future videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.